Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier, and I trust you had a wonderful break and a wonderful Christmas and a great New Year. Um, I certainly did. I wish everyone a supremely successful 2014 and the fulfillment of all your noble wishes for this year. Um, I look forward, of course, on Monday to hosting uh, Christine Lagarde at MindSpeak. Um, uh, this uh, my speak session is uh, on Monday. It's between three and five o'clock at the Intercontinental in Nairobi. Um, Christine Lagarde, of course, uh, is the managing director of the IMF. Uh, there is a link on Rich Wrapups for her resume, um, and it is pretty impressive, I must say. Uh, Baker McKenzie, the law firm, um, joined the French government in 2005, Minister for Foreign Trade. Minister for Agriculture and Fisheries, first woman to hold the post of Finance and Economy Minister of a G7 country from July to December 2008. Um, and uh, you know, a big hitter every which way you care to look at it. In July 2011, Lagarde became the 11th Managing Director of the IMF and the first woman to hold that position. Um, named a Chevalier in the Légion d'Honneur in July 2000. And I like this little snippet, a former member of the French national team for synchronized swimming. Um, very grateful, obviously, to Safari Kong and Bob Collymore for agreeing to put uh, Christine's MindSpeak on a live feed, and we will be beaming this uh, to the world from the Intercontinental. Um, as I said, uh, we hold uh, the function in the Mara Ballroom, and I'll put up a photograph of the setup. Uh, at our previous session. I'll also put up a link for a description I gave about MindSpeak uh, after we'd hosted Jeff Koinangi. Um, and in those days we were in the Westgate. And, uh, it was President Museveni who transferred us into the Intercontinental. And uh, I also did an interview with Bob Collymore, uh, who's of course giving us the live feed. Um, earlier this, well last year, if you get a chance you might care to have a look at that. My home thoughts start with Walt Disney. If you can dream it, you can do it. We drove down, and I'll just tell you about the Savo bit and I'll come to the coast tomorrow. We drove down from Nairobi on Christmas Eve and entered Savo East um, at Manyani Gate and stayed at Galdessa. And Galdessa sits on the Galana River actually is a part of the Sava I've never been to ever. It's extremely beautiful. It's an elephant hot spot. We drove all around the park, walked around the Lugard Falls, enjoyed ourselves thoroughly. Galdessa have this star sofa which is open to the night sky and the elephants passed so close one afternoon we could have touched them. I love the wide open spaces of the Sava. The place was a brilliant green after good rains. We saw at least 300, if not 400 elephants, wonderfully red in the green landscape. I think I've persuaded my family finally of the merits of the wide open spaces of the Sava. Um, and you know, once you've been to the Mara, you tend to be quite impatient to the Sava repays your patience because you're typically the only person there. It's your relationship with the situation as you find it, not a hundred other combis. I'll put up a photograph of the railway crossing at Manyani Gate and you can see how green it was and it had unseasonal rains um, just before we got there. Of course Manyani Prison was very famous uh, for being a holding pen for uh, um, a number of people who were then rebelling against the colonial government and there are many stories. It's very hot of people being put in containers and boiling themselves to death, as it were. I'll also put up a photograph of wild white flowers um, on the side of the road. It was a wash with flowers, very beautifully visual. Um, another one of the sunset at Lugard Falls. We came to Lugard Falls and then we were accompanied by a guide as we walked down the falls, very beautiful as well. And of course, the Sabo is renowned for the elephants in one afternoon. We came across a family of elephants just near the lodge as we were coming back. And we just 
switched the car off, the girls were a bit nervous. We just sat there for about 20 minutes in between this herd of about 30. And this same herd started to cross uh, the Galana River and I took a photograph of that on Christmas Day and put that up as well. I, of course, love the elephants, intelligent, incredible creatures. Political reflections, I like this quote from Paul Mason. When people ask me where it is going to kick off next, I say in people's heads. Chelsea Manning and Edward Snowden have hardly been made folk heroes in the Western media, but in the informal world, the world of online conversation, there are metaphors for what happens. Challenge unlawful state surveillance. Spill the beans on military atrocities in Iraq and you become a candidate for Guantanamo-style torture and mind games. In such a situation, metrics on poverty, inequality or trust are hardly relevant in the prediction of unrest. The networked char character of modern society makes country-specific unrest predictions pointless. There is, in reality, one political entity that matters. Right now, it is more unequal than it's ever been. Its core economic model is destroyed. The consent of its citizens to be governed is eroded. It is the world. Interesting. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, um, and I'll put up a photograph of him, he's second from the right, followed a Shinto priest to pay respect for the war dead at the Yasukuni Shrine in Tokyo on Thursday, December the 26th. My conclusions are that visits to the Yasukuni Shrine are like lighting a match in the tinderbox. Volgograd bombings. Uh, this is a report by RT News which says NATO and Bandar Bush are the main suspects. The back-to-back -back bombings in Volgograd come on the heels of Saudi Intel chief Bandar bin Sultan's reported threats to Putin earlier this year to sponsor terror attacks around the Sochi Olympics if Russia refused to allow military intervention in Syria. I'll put up a photograph of Prince Bandar and President Putin. Currency markets, the euro is at 137.51 and rose against the dollar the most since 2007 last year. Dollar index 80.19, Japanese yen 105.30, that's a five-year low. The yen plunged against the dollar last year, and that was the most since 1979. Swissy 0.8928, the pound 165.19. I've been bullish since I visited London and wrote that piece about the, the recovery being real and not a mirage. Aussie 0.8916, India rupee 61.83. South Korean won 1051.44, Rial 236.18, Egyptian pound weaker at 695.21. Not sure what's happened there, but we'll find out. South African rand at 1048.88, slumped 1.2% 1 this morning. Among the 31 most traded currencies tracked by Bloomberg, the Israeli shekel gained the most versus the dollar last year, 7.5%. The Argentine peso lost the most at 24.6%. Japanese currency declined 6.7% in the fourth quarter. I'll put up a three-month chart of the dollar index. And like this uh, quote from a fellow BNP's Paribas Serebriakov, who said the big dollar bullish trend never took off, and it didn't. I for one bought into it at some point last year, but in fact it never happened. Dollar positive factors that didn't materialize in 2013 have a higher chance of materializing this year because the Fed has started tapering. Um, I think it's going to be taper light. I don't think it's going to be enough to push the dollar higher. Euro dollar, I'm running with the 133.80 stop, which is now a great deal of distance away from the level we're at, 137.51. Dolly yen 105.30, the currency fell 17.6%. The yen fell against the dollar last year. Gold, 1222.01, big bounce, rallied from its worst year in more than three decades, declined to a six-month low um, uh, um, 
on December 31st when prices sank to 1182.27, lowest level since June 2008. Uh, it fell 28% in 2013, biggest annual loss since 1981. I think uh, I'm, I'm bearish and I'm going to buy one year, one touch, $1,000 puts. Crude oil lost at $98.71. We've had a strong close of the year, traded above 100 at the end of the year, up 7.2% in 2013. I think it looks a tremendous trading sell at uh, $100, where it briefly popped above. Sub Saharan Africa, Demina, have put out uh, their Africa forecasts, pretty interesting. They think the ANC April vote will f share will fall to below 60%. I'd agree with that. They reckon the Nairo is about to be devalued 10 to 15% by the new central bank governor, expecting President Jonathan to abandon his 2015 re-election bid. I think that's right as well. They're saying that the South Sudan civil war may trigger regional conflict. Um, I think uh, um, I'm not sure about that, actually. Ghana banking liquidity crisis on, on the horizon. That's been coming at us for a while. Um, the ICC to drop against to drop the case against Kenya's President Kenyatta. I think that's definitely going to happen. Um, if you can't, if you're asking for a, a deferral at this point in time, five years down the track, it's way too late. You haven't got a case. I think the attrition rate of the witnesses has been what has unraveled that case. South Sudanese rebels loyal to former President, uh, Vice President Rick Machar have seized control of Bor, the capital of the restive Jongle state. Nial Majak Nial told Reuters government troops loyal to President Salva Kiir had made a tactical withdrawal to Malual Chat Army Barracks, three miles, three kilometers south of the town on Tuesday. Yes, they, the rebels, have taken Bor, he said. Um, the information minister, uh, Benjamin, told Reuters on Monday Machar wanted to seize Bor so he could talk from a position of strength at peace talks, um, which are expected to start, uh, which have started or are expected to start today. There is no winner-takes-all outcome, I'm afraid, and it's something neither of the protagonists seem to properly understand or appreciate. I put up a photograph of the River Nile. Um, it's very disappointing what's happened, it really is. A self-proclaimed prophet and televangelist blamed for violence that killed more than a hundred people in DR Congo's two main cities Tuesday denied fleeing the country and called on the president to resign. Supporters of Joseph Mukumbilila Mutombo, who described himself as God's last envoy to humanity after Jesus Christ and Paul of Tarsus, blamed the army for deadly unrest in Kinshasa and Lumumbashi, which he called a massacre. The government said its forces had fought back a terrorist offensive on Monday, including attacks on the airport, the main army headquarters in the capital and in the second city of Lumumbashi. The preacher told AFP by telephone the allegation was incorrect without saying more about his whereabouts and demanded that Kabila step down, let him resign, let him quit, Joseph Mukumbila said. It is unacceptable that a foreigner should be the head of state. This is unacceptable, he said, referring to claims by Kabila's foes that he is Rwandan. Very credible ones, right here. The pastor also rejected the official version of Monday's violence, which he called a massacre. They, the assailants, were empty-handed. How do you explain that? Empty-handed. If you see the pictures of the bodies, there are no weapons. After taking control early Monday of the national radio and television premises in Kinshasa and holding reporters hostage, some armed youths clearly stated they were acting for Mukumbila, whom they called the prophet of the eternal. His Ministry of Restoration from Black Africa said in an online statement published Monday, that the armed forces had attacked the pastor's home in Lumabashi on Sunday, drawing armed reprisals. My conclusions are it was never going to be a linear victory parade post what the events in the Eastern DRC for President Kabila. And the response was always going to be an asymmetric one. Um, whether this is spontaneous or 
contrived and manufactured is yet to be answered. Uh, the Jazeera Hotel, one of considered one of the securest places in Mogadishu, saw three bombs explode within an hour outside that hotel. Um, evidence again that uh, the writ of the government hardly runs even in Mogadishu. The South African All Share has posted a 21.69% return over 12 months, uh, closed at a record on Tuesday, uh, and a 19% annualized gain. Dollar Rand, um, uh, 10.55, remember, is at a key level. We're now at 10.48.88. Um, weakened uh, all through last year, biggest annual slide since 2008. 10.55, as I said, is a key level. Egyptian pound weaker at 6.95.21, I'm not sure why. Egyptian EGX 30 up 27.43% over the last 12 months and at 36 month highs. Nigeria all share up 51.89% over the last 12 months. Ghana stock exchange up 80.69% over the past 12 months. The NSE 20 gained 19.2% for 2013, considerably below the all share, by the way, which is more reflective and more accurate. Um, and uh, I did an interview with Reuters where I said, you know, the, the, um, the trend uh, of, uh, has been one of international funds investing in Africa, and that's created demand for big cap, blue chip African equities. And for example, Safaricom rallied 100 15% through the year. Um, Kenyan NSC20 gained 29% in 2012, benefited, as I said, from a smooth election. Um, and uh, I'd also said lower interest rates and lower inflation have also helped to make Kenyan equities attraction, attractive. And I said I foresee a similar performance this year. A grenade attack, and I only read about this this morning, at the Kenyan coast wounded 10. Um, popular nightclub outside the coastal Kenyan city of Mombasa wounded at least 10 people early on Thursday. Incident occurred at 3.30 a.m. at a nightclub frequented by tourists in Diani, which where we were as well. It resembled explosions in 2012 and 2013. The club was busy with New Year revelers. Three people appeared from the other side of the road and threw a grenade at the nightclub, which grenade exploded, injuring 10 people. The attackers escaped on a motorbike, said Jack Ekakuro, Kwale Area Police Chief. It cannot be anything else but a terrorist attack. A grenade is not a maze cob that any village boy can handle and throw around at will. Um, and this is unfortunate, and of course we were not very far away at Southern Palms, which was beautiful, and I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Um, and I'll put up a photograph of the sunset. Um, at Diani, and um, I'm glad nothing. Well, I'm upset for those people, but you know, my daughters had insisted that they went to some New Year's Eve party and we compromised. I dropped them at midnight, picked them up around 2 30, that they made me wait. Um, but uh, again, people were nervous about that event as well, so it's, it's a sort of twin edged sword. So it's just one's pleased that nothing happened to one's children upset with the people who were injured. Um, KCB issued a press release about events in South Sudan on the 27th of December. That link is on the website. Um, there's also a link for the share price data. Um, rallied very sharply last year. Um, and uh, However, South Sudan does represent 9% uh, of its profit before tax and it has a 42% uh, where is it? A 42% market share um, in South Sudan as well. I did an interview not too long ago with Joshua Origara, the CEO. Do have a look at that if you have a chance. EverReady reported full year earnings, 11%, um, uh, sorry, uh, full year earnings uh, down uh, marginally. Uh, no dividend payment, full year EPS 22 cents versus the 33 cents previously. 11% um, growth in domestic revenues, 35% decline in export revenues, um, and at a market cap of $6.593 million, I would have thought the net asset value is some way north of that. 
Nairobi all shares up just under 50% on a 12-month rally basis. NSE 20 up 23.87% on a similar basis. And finally, I'll put up a photograph I took in the Savo. Um, just, it was just a little pool of water, but so representative of the beauty of it. And finally, evidence of a crocodile. Because when we went walking in the new guard, we went up quite close to the top, and also we found a crocodile's imprint in the soil. Very enjoyable uh, to, to pot around, so I'll put that up as well. Glad to be back, wishing you all the best for 2014, as I said. Um, and uh, we're back on the eighth floor once again. Hope to see you at Mind Speed. Goodness, that's a big one, isn't it? It's quite exciting with uh, Christine Lagarde. Um, that's from three o'clock to five o'clock, January 6th, which is a Monday. Um, please uh, register on the site, it's free. And also respond to us at info.rich.co.ke um, if you if you want to attend because obviously we'll have to have some kind of list going. Once again, thank you. Welcome back.